<laughs> Those are all supposed to be perfect squares. But since I hate geometry, like I hate um, Rosenkohl, okay. <laughs> Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to the Edwin Calendar. Do not judge me for my drawing, okay? I, I tried my best. I, I hate geometry. I hate drawing stuff. This is the best I could do, okay? Those are all supposed to be perfect squares. This is the so-called lean square problem. I found it somewhere a while ago. I wanted to put some geometry stuff on the advent calendar because you guys just love this quickly wiggly drawy stuff okay but since i hate geometry like i hate um rosenkohl okay <laughs> we are going to solve it analytically because if there's geometry on this channel then it's probably analytic geometry we are going to dive right in so the first thing i found really important in solving this problem right here is to actually factor the side lengths a little bit. So those are all areas. We want to find out the area of this big square right here, this big, beautiful, individual, thick, perfect square. <laughs> so 27 is the area on this one right here, meaning one side length makes square root of 27. If we take a look at the prime factorization of 27, it's going to give us three cubed, which is nothing other than the square root of three squared times three. If we take the square root of 3 squared, it's going to give us the absolute value of 3, meaning it's just 3. So this makes 3 times the square root of 3. Same spiel for our 12. Area is 12. One side length of this perfect square is going to give us square root of 12. But square root of 12, if we take a look at the prime factorization, is 2 squared times 3. Square root of 2 squared is going to give us 2 times square root of 3. Okay, good cheat. We have decomposed this and yeah, one side length of 3 as the area is going to give us square root of 3. Now, if you want to solve this analytically, we would like to define ourselves some linear function. And since this thing right here is a perfect square, you might have seen it in the thumbnail, okay? This means it's enough to know one side length. I'm going to call this thing f. It's a linear function and we are going to construct it. I'm going to place a coordinate system into here, such that it's easy for us to calculate everything. I'm going to put it here, the corner of this big, beautiful individual thick square is going to lie exactly on the ground right here in the orgo at the zero point. Meaning this point down here is zero. This makes us really easy to construct our linear function. A linear function in general is nothing other than ax plus b where a is just our slope and b is simply our y-intercept. This is what it's called if I remember correctly. Our y-intercept is exactly at y being equal to zero, meaning our b is going to die somewhere in a corner in Mexico, being eaten by hyenas. <sighs> now, we have to find out our a, but here are a few problems that come in. Well, how? Are we going to find out the slope exactly? This is, this is a bit weird, okay? So we have to define ourselves system of equations. At first, let us find out some points. We have certain points right here, for example, where our edge of the big square touches the corner of this 27 square. We are going to call it P1. Then we have this touchy touchy point, okay? I'm going to call it P2. And also we have P3 up here where our corner touches the other corner. Now, we are going to find out what P1, P2, and P3 actually are. P1 is nothing other than, okay, some x coordinate, which is this little piece, okay, we don't know what it is, so this is yet another unknown. This is why we need three points to get ourselves three equations, okay? We need them, <laughs> or we can find it out. Meaning, I'm going to call this thing little p, okay, little pp, and our y coordinate, well, is nothing other than square root of 27, so three times the square root of three. Now, where is P2 exactly? Well, P2, what's the x coordinate? We have P plus square root of 27 minus square root of 12. It's going to land us exactly here. So this is P plus square root of 27 minus square root of 12. It's going to give us the square root of 3. You see why I factor the stuff? Because stuff is going to cancel out really, really nicely. Also, what is the y coordinate? Well, exactly square root of 27 plus square root of 12 makes five times the square root of three. Okay, we have two equations and two unknowns that we are going to get from that. So this is good. That means 
our function is going to be determined uniquely. Now, all that's really left to find out is this point up here, and then we can just find ourselves a little metric, okay, the Euclidean metric, Papa Pythagoras, and then we are done. Meaning our P3 is going to be nothing other than some x coordinate, we don't know what it is, I'm going to make the index 3 right here, x3. And what's the y coordinate? Well, all of those side lengths added together makes exactly 6 times the square root of 3. Ah, that's the beauty of analytic geometry, I just like it. Okay, way, way better than the regular old geometry. Now, what exactly is our a? Well, this is just a slope and on linear function, this is nothing other than rise over run. It's called this, I think. Okay, y difference over x difference. Meaning overall, we are going exactly three square root of three steps upwards. So this makes three square root of three over the x difference, which is nothing other than p times x, p, p times x. Now we can simply plug p2 into here and see what our p actually is. Okay, this means f of this value is going to give us five times the square root of three. Overall, this is going to result in three times the square root of three over p times p plus the square root of three. Now, square root of three is not equal to zero, it's going to cancel out. Also, we are going to have p over p is going to give us exactly one, so this makes three, okay, we still have this factor of three, plus three times the square root of three over p. Now, we are having exactly five minus three is going to give us two. So two is nothing other than three times the square root of three over p, and now we can multiply both sides by p under the condition that's not equal to zero. No, it's not. And also we can divide both sides by two. Two is not equal to zero, so this is good. Meaning p is nothing other than three times the square root of three over two. And now we have uniquely determined our function right here, f. Meaning overall, f is nothing other than <laughs> And here comes the best part, okay, everything is going to cancel out so damn nicely. f of x is nothing other than 3 times square root of 3 over 3 times the square root of 3 over 2 times x. Meaning, this and that is going to cancel out, take the reciprocal of 1 half, it's going to give us 2 times x. Hey, <laughs> isn't that cool, okay? Our linear function is actually nothing other than 2 times x. Now that we have determined it uniquely, we can just plug in our y coordinate to get our x three out on the other side. Meaning if we were to plug in P3, we are going to get that. Okay, um, this is six times the square root of three. It's actually nothing other than two times X3. Meaning we can divide both sides by two. And this is going to give us with well, square root of 27 overall, right? Yeah, <laughs> three times the square root of three being equal to X3. Meaning our point three is thus nothing other than three times the square root of three comma six times the square root of three. And now we can make use of Papa Pythagoras. Meaning overall, we are just going to take you the Euclidean me metric and we are going to go from this point to here and see what the difference actually is. So our length on this interval. Meaning overall, if we are going to take a look at the Euclidean metric of um, the zero vector, zero point whatsoever, and P3, we are going to end up with the square root of this minus zero squared. So this is going to give us uh, nine times three. It's going to give us 27 plus, okay, and six times square root of three minus zero, it's just this thing, but squared. Then it's going to give us six times six is 36 times three is going to give us 108. 27 plus 108 is going to give us 135, and this is one side length of this perfect square, meaning if we were to square this, we're going to end up with the area being nothing other than 135. And this thing right here is actually my most favorite number. I just love this thing, okay? Because it's the first three odd numbers, and if you type it in on your keyboard, it, it just works like a charm. This right here is my most favorite number, and this is the solution to this little puzzle, and I really like this lean square problem, even though it's some geometry stuff. But before we actually end the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, for sponsoring this very video right here. 
If you're still looking for gift ideas this holiday season, then this should definitely be at the top of your wish list. Something that nurtures curiosity and builds confidence. Brilliant is an online problem solving based website and app with a hands on approach to various topics in science, maths, and computer sciences. Last month, Brilliant added brand new interactive courses to their already huge repertoire. Especially interesting to me are the new interactive mathematics and logic courses. Recently, I actually did a great live stream where I solved numerous stages of the number theory course. It was so much fun interacting with you guys in the chat and I could really tell that not only I, but all of you highly enjoyed Brilliant's content. It was so much fun interacting with you guys in the chat and I could really tell that not only I, but also all of you highly enjoyed Brilliant's content. Check out the live stream, link will be at the top of the description to get a nice overview of Brilliant's magnificent courses and how they are being structured. Check out the link at the top of the description and get a brilliant gift for yourself. Or for your loved ones, maybe. If you want to try a brilliant for free, check out the link at the top of the description. Also, the first 200 people to use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So if you really want to support the channel, if this sounds like it's something for you, check out the link, try out brilliant and I think I swore to you. you know how you can support the channel in various other ways and up until the next video, have a day. Ciao!